This recipe is sponsored by Squarespace. Of all the fancy cuts of meat out there, lamb shanks might be the easiest to cook. Pretty much anything you do to them will work, as long as you go low and slow. People often braise them. My preference is to slow roast them. It takes about four hours, so this is a weekend dinner for sure, but most of that time is unattended. I made these with a celery root puree and this roasted garlic lamb sauce that is possibly the best sauce I've ever made. Lamb shanks. If you can't get them or you don't like that lamby flavor. You could totally do this with beef shanks. Beef shanks are generally cut into bone-in steaks, but because lambs are smaller, these are basically full shin bones, and you don't have to do any home butchery to them at all. The bone will clean itself in the oven. I know what you're thinking. Didn't he just post a video where he says he never cuts himself in the kitchen? Well, I don't. This was a woodworking accident, or let's call it a poor choice. I'll just grease these shanks up with some olive oil and season them generously. There's a lot of meat here. I'm doing salt, pepper, and mustard powder. I like mustard with lamb. Now for the garlic sauce, we need garlic. You could just throw a bunch of whole peeled cloves into that roasting tray, but I'm going to do the thing where you cut the top off of a whole head, make sure that every clove has an escape hatch at the top. That's not very fresh. You can tell by the green cores. I think I'll do two heads. Roasted garlic is not pungent in the way that garlic normally is, so you can use a lot of it. I'll throw those in there and get everything coated with oil and seasoning. Out of an abundance of caution, I'll position the garlic heads underneath the shanks so that they don't burn under the broiler. If your oven doesn't have a grill, you could just blast them at maximum baking temperature for a few minutes, or just skip this step. We're going to brown them again at the end, but I think browning them a little bit up front results in better flavor across the whole dish. I'll flip those and give them another couple of minutes under the broiler. Shanks have such an irregular shape, it's much easier to brown them in the oven rather than frying them off in a pan. Alrighty, that was just five minutes of browning. Broiler off. I'll get everything even in the roasting tray, and if I were going to braise these, I would put in some liquid, maybe halfway up the meat, but I'm going to be slow roasting, so no extra liquid. I'll just seal this up pretty tight with foil to trap some steam and keep them from drying out. Throw that in the oven, and I'm doing 285 Fahrenheit, 140C, anything in that general neighborhood will work. Celery root, or celeriac it's also called. If you like the flavor of celery, this makes a shockingly delicious mashed potato-like puree. It is much more work than mashed potatoes, so maybe just make mashed potatoes potatoes, but if you want to try this, step one is peel. The skins are very tough and thick, so it takes a while. Honestly, one big celery root would have been enough for this meal, but I've got two. Once peeled, I'm going to slice these pretty thin. Celeriac is very hard. To cook it reasonably quickly, you got to break it down into the smallest pieces you can manage. I might just try grating it on a box grater. Check how hard that bigger one is. Keep your fingers well out of the way. Now I'll stack up a few slices at a time and matchstick these. This gets us plenty of surface area and that'll help these cook quicker. And really, just to make them easier to stir around, I'll cross-cut them a little bit to get a very rough dice. Good enough. It's getting pureed in the end. A pan big enough for the job, and I'll melt in a fair bit of butter. There are probably easier ways of cooking celeriac, but I'm basically doing this famous recipe by Chef Raymond Blanc. The first thing he does is cook the pieces in some butter for a while. With this huge quantity, I'm going to have to use high heat and stir constantly. This phase gets some really nice flavor on the pieces and gives them a good head start on cooking. After about 10 minutes, they've reduced in volume by maybe a third, and things are starting to turn brown, which I don't want. So what Raymond Blanc does is simmer them in milk. You could use water, but milk tastes really nice. You want just enough to get the pieces covered. Pieces that are really exposed will oxidize and turn brown. Then you just turn the heat down to low, cover, and gently simmer until soft, which can take a real long time. Okay, this is going to look kind of gross, but have faith. The milk has curdled, and that's just fine. It's great even. Those curds are going to give us amazing flavor. The celeriac chunks are soft. I simmered those about an hour, which is honestly more than they needed, but I was busy elsewhere. Raymond Blanc tells you to lift the chunks out of the liquid with a slotted spoon. I'm just pouring the liquid out instead. That is almost entirely whey that has separated from the milk. Save it for now. Then dump the solids into the food processor. This is not a potato. It's basically impossible to mash smooth by hand. Sorry I steamed your face there. Blast that for a while until it's as smooth as you can get it. Depending on how it's looking, you might need to mix in a little of your reserved liquid to thin it out. Time to flavor it with salt and the magic ingredient, which is a little cayenne or any dried chili powder, works amazing with this. And Blanc calls for a squeeze of lemon if you've got it. It tastes good and it'll help keep the puree from oxidizing and turning brown. 
It might not be the prettiest stuff in the world, but it is so sweet and nutty and rich tasting, despite having very little butter compared to how I would normally make mashed potatoes. Alrighty, my lamb shanks have been slow roasting for about four hours, and see, the bone cleans itself. Just by touching the meat, I can see it's fall apart tender. My garlic is golden and totally soft. We're done. And you can totally eat these just like that. They'd be great, but I'm going to remove them to a baking sheet. At this stage, you could refrigerate them and finish them later. I'm just going to hold them for a few minutes while I make my sauce and then roast them again for a few minutes, totally dry to crisp the surface. Sauce. Take the garlic out to let it cool. And depending on how many shanks you did and how big your roasting tray is, you may or may not have a lot of juice in here along with all that rendered fat. If you can see two distinct layers of liquid like that, that means you have a lot of water-based meat juice in there along with the fat. And I like to turn the heat on and boil most of that water out. Just takes a few minutes in a tray this wide. Eventually, you'll hear the pan go from a boiling sound to more of a fizzing, frying sound. That means most of the water is gone. You can see meat solids floating around in the grease and browning, and that's enough. With the water out, I can very easily pour off the rendered fat while keeping the tasty stuff that was dissolved in the juice right there in the pan where I want it. Roast some potatoes in that lamb fat another day. Now that my garlic has cooled a bit, I can squeeze it out of the skins. Compared to normal garlic, roasted garlic is like a totally new substance. It's this sweet, silky goo you can spread on toast or use as a sauce base. Heat back on, and normally I would use white wine to deglaze this pan, but I have this incredibly flavorful celery whey here. Might as well use that. I'm just holding back any leftover curds that have settled on the bottom of the jug. If you need more liquid, just use water. You could just use water, period. There's plenty of flavor in here already. Scrape the pan to get all the solids dissolved and mash up the garlic to a smooth paste. You could totally finish this sauce as is, but if you need it to be really smooth and pretty for your thumbnail, yeah, you could strain it through a sieve. This is really pointless and I feel bad for doing it. Don't bother straining it. This is purely cosmetic. I could return this to the pan, but it's in a heat safe bowl, so I might as well finish it in here. I just want to melt in quite a bit of butter with just enough heat to melt it nice and slowly. Monte au beurre, they say. There should be little or no bubbling. Too much heat and you break the natural emulsion of the butter. With the emulsion intact, we have thickened our sauce, we've enriched it, and we've increased our overall sauce volume. I'll give that a taste. Doesn't need any more salt, but it needs acid, and I happen to have another half of that lemon from before, so in it goes. Between the lamb fond and the milky celeriac broth and the roasted garlic and everything, that is probably the most extraordinary sauce I've ever made myself. I'll throw the shanks back in the oven to reheat and brown a little. I might turn the oven up to like 400 Fahrenheit, 200 C. Real quick, I'll steam some broccolini, which is not to be confused with the visually similar broccoli rob. Broccoli rob is very bitter. This is very sweet. After a couple of minutes, it's just barely fork tender, pull the steamer basket out, I love that steamer basket, dump the water, melt in a little butter, broccoli back in, pinch of salt, toss, there's our veg. And here's our shanks. I just think they're so much more appetizing if you dry out the surface for a few minutes and get them a little crispy. The celery root puree, I literally just reheated in the microwave, totally fine. This shank really is not as much food as it looks like. Most of the mass here is bone and some other inedible stuff. It's a perfectly reasonable single portion. You might even want to make one or two extra shanks and in case you got some small ones. Time for that sauce. I think you want to get that sauce tasting a little too acidic on its own because you need that acid to cut the richness of this meat. Lamb shanks have a lot of fat in them, which is why you can slow roast them without drying them out. When you braise them in extra liquid, I think they can come out too moist, like a wet mop. These are perfect inside, still pink because we use such a gentle oven temperature. Yeah, I think you should probably just make mashed potatoes, but give Raymond Blanc's celeriac puree a try sometime. It is a whole nother thing. Delicious. And like I said, you could do this recipe with beef shanks. They might take a little longer in the oven, but they'd be way cheaper. Why is sheep so expensive, at least here in the U.S., and why are certain people turned off by its distinct and powerful flavor? We'll talk about that another day. What we can talk about right now is the custom Adam Ragusea chef knife available for purchase at adamragusea.com. Or at least there are some knives still available as of this recording. They're going real fast, and I've been selling them with the help of Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. I cannot tell you how easy it was to set up this product page on my Squarespace website. I told Squarespace what I want to sell and for how much and how many I have of them. As soon as we're sold out, Squarespace will automatically update the site for me. I don't 
don't have to worry about selling knives that I don't actually have. Squarespace is handling all the payment processing for me. I used Squarespace to send out an email blast 24 hours before the knives officially went on sale. If you bought something from me previously and signed up for my email list, I sent you an email about the knife on Sunday. All of that I put together in Squarespace in minutes, and the email looked great. Whatever you're selling, products or services or content, Squarespace makes it absurdly easy to do on the internet. You can see what I mean and start building a site for free at squarespace.com. When you're ready to actually publish it, use my code Ragusia to save 10% on a website or domain registration at checkout. Thank you, Squarespace. And let's say thank you, Garlic. Oh, Garlic, you have given me so very much in my life, and you've asked so little in return, except that one thing we mustn't discuss. 